tray. Um, finally, in the camera settings, uh, one lovely feature or, or um, aspect of the EX3 is its ease of use in a multi-camera setting. All right, there are three things that make it super amenable to multi-camera production. Number one, time code input and output. You can match these guys up to anything. Welcome, SMPTE time timecode. Number two, genlock. Okay, a lot of the switchers out there are auto genlocking right now. A lot of them are not. You know, sometimes it's a feature you can turn on and off. If you've got a camera that accepts time code and accepts genlock, you're light years ahead of the competition in trying to put together a successful multi-camera production. And number three is its remote input. You can connect an RMB150 or an RMB750, which allows uh, an engineer to sit at a row of paint boxes with a monitor and change the iris, change the colorimetry, change the menu settings, really make it happen all at once with several cameras through the remote input. A lot of my clients have said, okay, Jesse, I'm taking two of these out. I'm taking three of these out. I'm shooting a church service. I'm shooting a concert, this or that. How can I make it, how can I lock up the time code? And I'm just gonna step you through that process briefly if you guys, if you guys are into that, yeah? All right, so this is all done in the regular menu of the camera. There we go. So here we are in the menu, yes? Uh, and the first, the first spot we're going to go to is the time code menu. Time code menu looks like the little clock. The two important settings in the time code menu is that you've got to be on preset and free run. Okay? Preset and free run. The reason behind that is, um, you know, the cameras may be recording differently individually. So you want to keep a master clock. You can use one of these cameras to generate the master clock. If, that's the, if you're working with the camera, you're just going to use time code out. Maybe go to a distribution amplifier, or maybe you want to daisy chain through the cameras. But whatever camera is the master, that's where you'll do your presetting. Um, free run is important because that one master clock is going to change uniformly throughout the day. It's not only going to advance when it's recording. So um, those two settings are vital. Preset, free run. The next most important thing to make it happen is genlock. All the cameras have to share a unique clock, uh, the same clock, in order to advance time code all, all at once. So you could, using only three cameras, let's, let's call this the master. It's tough to see because of my, of my battery here. But assuming this was the master, I would take time code out, right? go to the time code in on the next camera, loop it, time code out of that camera, into the next, into the next, and into the next. But you might not see your time code lock up right away. That's because you've got to gen lock all of them. So luckily, you've got a monitor out right here, BNC video. All right? That can serve as your gen lock. So now your master camera is serving up time code and gen lock to all the others. You'll take monitor out of the master camera, gen lock in of the next, gen lock out of that camera to the next in the chain, and so on and so forth. Now you'll know you're locked up from two things. Number one, in the viewfinder, your time code is going to be locked up. And number two, as long as you're not looking at the master camera, all of the slaved cameras will say, um, what is it, sync locked. Anyway, it has an indication, S-Y-N-C lock. So when it receives time code and gen lock from a, a master source, and it could either be a camera or it could be something separate. You could have a, uh, a time code generator and a sync generator sent to a distribution amplifier, gone out to all the three cameras, or you could use one of these cameras as the master. Once that's done correctly, the three, four, five other cameras that you're using that are connected to this guy, the time code will match, and there will be an indication that you're locked up to the master camera. Pretty awesome. I have a question. Question in the audience. You said that the time code out of one goes into the I need time to, code. I, just for, in just for the one, benefit right? of our millions of internet viewers. Okay, internet viewers. You said the time code out of the master goes into the time code in of, the, of a slave. I'm assuming one that's cable, a cable there, and then do you have a wire, is there a wireless option for that? Okay. In case the cameras are really far away? Sure, sure. So um, the question again, is there a wireless option for time code? The answer, yes. Uh, there are a couple manufacturers out there that do make um, wireless time code hops. Can be done, no problem. Another question in the back. Can I sing for this? Yeah, you, you can sing. You can sing your question. Well, uh, I was late here, but, uh, but, I, but I have a question. Um, I, I don't understand why we have to use the cables. I mean, 
If we are using free run, I understand that we're going to have the three cameras or as many cameras as possible, you know, uh, running at the same at the same time code, right? Right. Well, um, yes and no. It's time code is based on quartz vibrating, right? So um, as accurately as possible. Let's say you couldn't connect your cameras. Let's say you couldn't have the cables connected at all times, and you wanted to just get as close as you could. Maybe at every break, you'll say, okay, guys, you know, sync up, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll disconnect and go back to our camera spots and let it run. You may, you may get away just fine, but um, you know, when you're shooting at 60 frames a second, there's just such a, an amount of precision that you need to lock everything up precisely. So if you are cabled, you don't have to worry about it. You are, uh, you're on. If you're not cabled, you're going to be pretty good. You're going to be within a frame or two. You know, but every, every hour or so, every break or so, every opportunity that you have, I would just lock it back in just to get that exact sync. I mean, it's just going to make it easier on your editor in, in, you know, when he's trying to match up all the cameras. If you're not really good friends with your editor, or if you're doing your own editing and you're, you're, you're real good, uh, you know, you've got a lot of faith in your own ability, it doesn't have to remain cabled. That's, that's true. Are you talking about locking both every hour, both the gen lock and the time code? Um, Yes. The time well, the time code won't get a good lock without a gen lock. Right. So what gen lock does, um, so let's say we're shooting 60 frames a second, right? Um, that means, uh, all right, you know what 60 frames a second means. But uh, what gen lock does is it tells everybody exactly when zero is. Because this guy might have started at three and is already at 60, three frames before the next guy. What a gen lock will do is give everybody the exact same zero. So they all say, all right, ready, one, two, three on the exact same spot in the second. Yeah? What's up, Tom? How are we doing? Uh, a question from the audience, and I think it may relate to that. Uh, it says, uh, can you jam sync, and how long would it hold? OK. The question is, can you jam sync, and how long would it hold? So this does relate back to, uh, to our discussion. A jam sync would be if we went time code and monitor out to time code and gen lock in just momentarily, but we couldn't remain cabled. How long would that hold? Maybe an hour, maybe three hours, maybe the whole show. But um, if you want to be 100% certain frame accurate, you better be cabled. Cool? I, I hope that satisfies our, our web audience. Yeah, they're loving this. Great, because we're about to move on. Um, so I'm going to shift now from the camera settings portion to the personalization portion of the presentation. The reason behind that is uh, there's, a, there's a really nice bridge here. And that bridge is multi-camera operation. Let's say you've got these five cameras. You've got your time code synced. You've got your gen lock synced. But now you want the cameras to all look the same. You want them to all behave the same. You want them to all have the same assignable buttons, have the same frame rate, have the same picture profile menus so that uh, you know, they can do that funny warming and cooling stuff, right? Well, uh, some of Sony's cameras famously have been difficult to match up using uh, you know, memory cards and this and that. If you've ever shot it on an F900, you may know what I'm talking about. This camera, famously easy, simple to make it happen. Let me show you what I mean. 